RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, proudly presents... Screen Directors Playhouse, star Kirk Douglas, production champion, director Mark Robeson... Hollywood screen directors present a symphony in fists. The motion picture drama, Champion, starring Kirk Douglas in his original role of Midge Kelly with Frank Lovejoy as Tommy Haley. No one remembers who won that four-round prelim in Kansas City that night years ago. Everyone knows who lost it. Midge Kelly, by a decision. He lost because he'd never been in a prize ring before. He was just fighting to eat. But he had heart, he had guts, and if he was willing to learn, I was willing to teach him how to fight. I talked to him about it later in the dressing room. He was a battered mess, but he grinned at me. Oh, no thanks. Not for me. What good's the big money if you don't live to spend it? <laughs> All right, forget it. But if you're ever in L.A., you can find me in Brady's gym. Yeah, sure, sure, L.A., Brady's gym. Yeah, goodbye. He brushed me off like dandruff, and I thought I'd seen the last of him until one day in Brady's gym in Los Angeles. Hello, Mr. Haley. Huh? Oh, sure. Kansas City. <laughs> Mitch Kelly. Yeah, that's right. How are you, Kelly? Hey, you told me to look you up, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. But I'm retired now. Retired? You want some advice? You do the same. Yeah, but you told me to look you up. You said you want to manage me. Well, that was then. This is now. I'm out of the fight business. It stinks. No kidding. Take a deep breath. It stinks in here, doesn't it? You go on home. No kidding. What do you mean, go home? I don't need you. You're not the only manager in the world. I'll find somebody else. I'll show you. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with me, says? Look, you ever been poor? Well, I'm sick of it. And I'm sick of being a hey you all my life. Look, Midge here. What's that? Five bucks. Pay me back when you get a job. Keep it. Sure. Get a job. I've had jobs. Soda jerk, fry cook, uh, bus boy, ditch digger. Nice, clean, healthy work. Big money. Well, I'm tired of being nobody. I'm going to get someplace. Now, look at it this way. Now, wait a minute. You see that fellow sitting over there on that bench with a cane? That's my brother, Connie. He's crippled. I got him to take care of. I got my mother back in Chicago. You told me there was big money in the fight game. That's right. You take me on, and I'll make plenty for both of us. Oh, you will, huh? You bet I will. All right, I'll take you on. Now you're talking. You're going to have to work. Well, let's go. You're going to work until your bones hurt, and you're going to learn to break other guys' bones. It'll be a pleasure. You're going to learn every dirty trick in the business, and there's plenty of them. Don't worry. I'll learn. I'm going to get someplace. He learned, he learned fast, and he learned right. And in his first fight, Midge was a killer tasting blood for the first time. In his dressing room after the fight, he was drunk with his first victory. Hey, Connie, did you hear them out there, huh? I heard them. Huh? Hey, what's the matter, Connie? I don't know, Midge. I didn't know you in that ring. Ah, you talking kid stuff. You looked as if you wanted to kill that guy. Is that bad? Midge. Listen, I want to fight. My first fight, that's all. You hear that crowd? For the first time in my life, people cheering for me. Were you deaf? Didn't you hear them? Yeah, but is it worth it? Ah, wake up, Connie. Smell the coffee. Smell the steaks. We're not hitchhiking anymore. We're riding. I'm on my way, and I'm going to get someplace. Nine, ten. 
My boy Kelly, promising young middleweight, keeping his promise for three great years, tossing hard leather from coast to coast. Salt Lake, Denver, Omaha, Tulsa, Dallas, St. Louis, Kansas City, Chicago, Cleveland, and New York. And then a chance at Johnny Dunn, leading contender for the middleweight title. Oh, yeah? What do you mean, oh, yeah? You were downtown today. When do I meet Dunn, huh? Midge, the boys gave me a cigar, patted me on the back, and told me to drop dead. What? They say you can't beat Dunn. Who says I can't beat Dunn? Well, Dunn is a big draw, Midge, so you lose to him. He goes on to fight the champion and grab the title. Hey, you mean uh, I toss the fight? Well, that's the way they want it. Who cares what they want? They're the control. They own the business. Well, they don't own me. Listen, Midge, I'm not telling you to do it. But if you don't, you'll be fighting in the sticks until your beard is long enough to reach the rosin. Oh, no, no. Nobody's rubbing dirt in my face now. What kind of a manager are you? What's in it for you? Hold it, Midge. Yeah, three years. Work like a slave. Build the muscles. Build the wind. Live like a monk. Beat your brains out. And then the fat bellies with the big cigars, they tell you you're still a tramp. And I can beat Johnny Dunn. You know I can beat him. I know it, Midge. But this one, you'll lose. I don't know how to lose. Well, look, if you want to stay in business, if you want to stick close to the real money, this one, you'll lose. Now, what's it going to be, Midge? All right. I lose. The main event... Midge Kelly, my boy, versus Johnny Dunn for clean sport and a cash consideration and a chance at the middleweight championship of the world. All right, Johnny, Midge, you both know the rules. I want you to watch yourselves on low blows. Let's have a nice clean break, shake hands, come out fighting. Take your call. Relax, Midge, you're tense. Take it easy. Yeah, nice clean break, but toss the fight. Shh. Ah. Who's a flashy blonde at ringside? It's Johnny Dunn's girl. Why? What's she grinning at? Never mind her, Midge. Doesn't she think I can take her, boy? Forget it. Well, she can get the smile off her face, can't she? It's ten seconds, kid. You know what to do now. Yeah, I know what to do. What? I'm going to wipe that smile off her face. We gotta get out of here. I told you I could beat him. Up the aisle. Don't get lost. Wait follow a me. Come Wait on, follow a me. Minute. Come on. I want to talk to Johnny Dunn's girl a minute. Mitch. Well, where's that smile now, baby? Who do you think you are? Call Skyler, 78941, and find out. Mitch, come on. Don't forget, Blondie. Coming, Tommy. I got it, Tommy. Okay. Yeah? Well, I'm calling it. Oh. <laughs> Hello. I live at one Sutton place. Hey, nice address. I'm making you a martini. Tell her to get warm. Who was that? Johnny Dunn's girl. Grace Diamond? Yeah. Winner takes all. Huh? <laughs> You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Champion, starring Kirk Douglas and presented by RCA Victor. They say the census takers this year expect to find more American families together at home than at any time since George Washington's day. Yes, you've guessed why. They'll be looking at television, most of them at RCA Victor Television, America's favorite. A set which enchants families en masse is the RCA Victor T-164, a 16-inch table model. Women love it for its gracefully proportioned, richly finished cabinet. Children love it because it's so easy to tune. Men love it for its matchless RCA Victor engineering. And everybody loves it for its really vast picture and incomparable performance. 
The suggested list price of the T-164, slightly higher in some locations, is only $299.95 plus federal tax. Here's hoping such a marvelous television value will soon enable you to join the United Families of the United States, RCA Victor Branch. Now, back to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Champion, starring Kirk Douglas in his original role of Midge Kelly, with Frank Lovejoy as Tommy Haley. So, uh, my boy, Midge Kelly, had himself a parlor date with Johnny Dunn's girl, one Sutton Place. Nice address, that one Sutton Place. Olive or onion in your martini, Midge? Uh, uh, olive. Olive. Uh, thanks. How do you feel after the fight? Oh, Fine. Johnny's in the hospital, you know. Yeah, I, uh, I heard. They say he'll never fight again. Gee, that's, uh, yeah, it's tough. But uh, he's planning a comeback. He wants a return match. Oh, anytime. Meanwhile, you're king of the world, hmm? <laughs> What do you think? Winner takes all. Come here, baby. I think this... Why, you... I had a lot of time invested in Johnny Dunn. Did you think you could knock him senseless and then prance over here and try me on like a second-hand suit? Go on, crawl out of here. Go on. All right. You're a dime a dozen even in good times. Wait, you. Well? Come back here. Well? You give up awful fast, Mitch. I just wanted to see if you thought I was too easy. <laughs> Boy, you're a character, all right. Does it uh, hurt where I slapped you, doll? Oh, I've been I've been slapped before. We got to talk about your future, doll. Yeah. You're dead in the fight racket now. You know that. Unless. Unless what? Unless you get yourself a manager. I got a manager. You got an appendix too, but it'll never make you rich. See Jerry Harris. Johnny Dunn's manager? He can get you everything that Dunn was due for. And he'll square things with the gamblers for you. I can't drop Tommy Haley just like that. And get yourself a liquor license and a television set, because you're all through in boxing. Look, I didn't come this far to be through. And see Jerry Harris. No. For a shot at the title? For me, doll? Uh, you, uh, you know Harris pretty well, huh? We were the very best of friends. Until he took unto himself a beautiful society wife. Okay. Get an appointment with him. Now. Come here, doll. And, uh, so my boy Mitch Kelly shook me and signed up with Jerry Harris. And pretty soon Mitch was signed for a bout with a champion. Oh, Mitch was getting someplace all right... Whether his brother Connie approved of the method or not. You threw him out? You threw Tommy Haley Connie, out? Connie, I had to do it. It was our only chance. But this man was like a father to you. Well, he fed you. He put shoes on your feet. He made you. Who's been taking the punches, Haley or me? All this rotten business. Oh, lay off the business. It's like any other business. Only here the blood shows. Listen, Connie. It's time for you to grow up. Look, you and me and Ma... That's what's important, nobody else. Midge, what's happened to you? Nothing stands in your way anymore. You've got your own way of destroying people, and I don't think I want any part of it. Okay. Who's twisting your arm? Go on. Get yourself a job. Feed yourself for a change. Ah, go on. Take your bleeding heart out of here. All right, Midge. I'll tell Ma how you're doing. Yeah. Run home to Mama. Okay. The winner and new champion, Mitch Kelly!
He was a great champion, Mitch Kelly. Yep, and uh, he was quite a boy. He dropped Johnny Dunn with those hard fists of his, and then he dropped me for Jerry Harris. Then he began dropping Grace Diamond for Harris's society wife. Midge found Grace waiting for him in his apartment one evening when he came home to dress for a big date. Hmm. Hey, how'd you get in here, Gracie? Thanks for remembering my name. Ah, that's all right. Uh, I'm in a hurry. Will you excuse me, Gracie? Where are you going again tonight? Huh? Oh, out. I got a date with a lady. Uh, you know what a lady is? Nah, how could you? You know anything about art? You know anything about opera? Nah, all you know is how to spend my money, huh? Well, so long, Gracie. I gotta get dressed. Wherever you're going, I'm going with you. You're not gonna shake me now. Oh, yes, I am. For good. You better promote yourself another meal ticket. No, Midge. All I want is you. Don't do this to me. I'll do anything you want. You will? Yes. Then why don't you call up Johnny Dunn? Midge, if you do this to me, I'll plaster your name all over town. I'll raise such a... Oh, no. You're going to be a good girl. Because if you aren't, I'll put you in the hospital for a long, long time. I got to change now. Don't be here when I come out. Midge Kelly, champion, was hitting the high spots all right. But Johnny Dunn was coming back hard and strong, demanding a match with Kelly until Midge had to give it to him. That's when Midge dumped Jerry Harris. Well, Tommy, it's going to be a tough fight. And, well, you're the best trainer in the business. Look, I give you one-third of my purse. <laughs> you're quite a boy, Midge Kelly. I took him on. A training camp. Men in motion, flick of jump ropes, rumble of punching bags, telegram. Ma, very ill. Can you come right away? Connie. Oh, gee, Tommy, I, I can't go now, can I? It's up to you, Midge. Oh, Ma's had those attacks before. You know best. I know Ma wouldn't ask me to break training because she's sick. Look, it's Connie. I wish she'd grow up. What's it gonna be, Midge? Be? A fight? I got a fight on my hands, haven't I? Yeah. Well, so okay. Train. Mitch. Hi, Connie. Hey, when'd you get in town? How's Ma? How's Ma? She's dead, that's how Wha she is. Dead? And where were you when she was crying for you, calling for you? Training. Getting somewhere, defending the oh, championship. Gee, Connie, I, I didn't think she was going to die. Oh, I sent you a telegram. I tried to yeah, telephone but her. I was She's working. gone. Ma's gone. She died calling All for you right. and crying All for you. All right. Now get out, Connie. I got to fight. I got to relax. You stink. You stink from corruption. I ought to Don't beat. do it, Connie. You! Why, you... <clears throat> Hit me with your cane, will you? Here we go, champ. There. There's your cane, gimp. Coming, Tommy. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of round seven on your RCA Sportscast. The first round the champion has not taken by a decisive margin. The champ looks worried, and there's a conference going on in his corner. Gee, Tommy, I, I hit him with everything but a club. He's in good shape, champ. Yeah, I should have had him. I should have had him. Round eight. I don't know what's wrong, folks, but the champion's timing is off. He's missing oftener and getting hit oftener. He doesn't seem to be in the same fine fettle as Round nine was even. Round ten. Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Dunn has just opened a bad cut over the champion's eye. And oh, oh, a staggering right to the champion's head. And Kelly is hurt. He's definitely hurt. Oh, oh, Dunn is cutting Kelly to pieces in there. He's cutting him to ribbons. The champ's covering up. He's back on the ropes, covering up. Round eleven, murder. The challenger reducing the champion, my boy, to human rubble. 
Mitch Kelly, his face a mash, still answering the bell, refusing to quit, being led back to his corner. I'll get him. I'll get him. Mitch, you're through. I'm going to throw in the towel. No. I'll kill you if you do. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Okay, then. Fight. <laughs> Round 12. 13. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it! He's down. He's down! The champion's down! Kelly is down! Down. I'm down. I can't move. I, I can't get up. Good work, Johnny Dollar. Cut him to ribbons! Great. Kill him for me, Dollar. You got him, Johnny. Good work! She's for him now. Johnny. Good boy, Johnny. I'll show it. I'll wipe that smile off your face. I can beat him. I'm the champ. I can beat him. Up. Get up. Get up! He's on his feet. The champ is on his feet. Oh, he's lashing out savagely at Dunn with terrific rights left. The head, the body, the head again. And now it's Dunn's turn to cover up. He's trying to clench. He's, he's down. Johnny Dunn is down. And this really looks like it, ladies and gentlemen. The count is three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, Mitch. Sit here. I won. You sure did, Mitch. Gee, did you hear them out there, Connie? Connie? I'm Tommy. I won. Look, I'll get a doctor. Oh, you're talking kid stuff. I want to fight, that's all. My first fight... Gee, for the first time in my life, people cheering for me. Midge, Midge, sit down. Take it easy. Oh, let go. Are you deaf? Didn't you hear them? Wake up. Connie, smell the coffee. Smell the steaks. We're not hitchhiking anymore. We're riding. I'm on my way now, and I'm going to get someplace. Sit down, kid. Go. Will you sit down? Go, will you? Oh, fat bellies with the big cigars aren't going to make a bum out of me. Get me a fight with Dunn. I can beat him. You know I can beat him. <laughs> Tommy! <laughs> Tommy. Midge. Midge, the champ, he's dead. statement for the press about my brother? Sure, I'll give you boys a statement. Midge Kelly was a... Watch it, Connie. He was a champion. He went out like a champion. He was a credit to the fight game. To the very end. <laughs> You have just heard the last act of Champion, and our star, Kirk Douglas, with our guest screen director, Mark Robeson, will be with us in just a moment. Next Friday, another great star brings a fascinating performance to the screen director's playhouse. Our story, for the first time on the air, is Chicago Deadline, and recreating his original role will be Alan Ladd, with screen director, Lewis Allen. Now, here again is tonight's star, Kirk Douglas. Kirk, didn't I hear somewhere that you made a kind of sentimental pilgrimage to New York right after you finished Champion? Uh, yes, I did, Jimmy. I made the rounds of all the places I knew ten years ago when I was studying at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Places like the Star Club, you mean? Uh-huh. No, no. Places like uh, Schraff's. Oh, I see. As a student, you ate at Schraff's, huh? Oh, no. I only worked there. I couldn't afford to eat there. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you visited where you used to live? Yeah, Central Park was looking fine. <laughs> and you know, Jimmy, the RCA building was as nice and warm and hospitable as ever. Say, I bet I know something about RCA, Victor, that you don't, Jimmy. What's that? You know, I spent a lot of cold afternoon in RCA's exhibition hall. Look, guess what they're exhibiting now? 
What, Kirk? Their new 45 automatic record changer and records. Well, dog my cat. Well, you know, a guy explained the whole thing to me, Jimmy. Did you know that in the 45 RPM system, RCA Victor has achieved the first record ever to be free of distortion over 100% of the playing surface? Right. And what they've done for convenience. Why, the 45 changer is so small and light, my five-year-old boy carries ours all around. Yeah, and that guy in the RCA building told me you can attach it to any radio. And it's so easy to run. He says his three-year-old boy uses it for hours on end. Well, did he tell you that you just have to push one button once and it plays ten records automatically? Almost an hour of music? Yeah, that's right. Say, what's more, the 45 records are so tiny, you can carry them in your pocket. Yeah, they're non-breakable, too. And say, Jimmy, do you know how little the 45 changer costs? As low as $12.95. Right. And prices on the 45 records start as low as 46 cents plus tax. The 45's a beautiful proposition all around. No wonder it's the fastest-selling record system in America. Yes, the 45 is sweeping the country like, well, like Kirk Douglas. Hear the 45 soon at your RCA Victor dealers. And friends, join the swing to 45 when you buy your next record. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet the real champion. At 170 pounds, he throws a very special kind of punch. It doesn't close your eyes. It opens them to all the powerful drama that a fine director can achieve on the screen. You'll know what I mean if you've seen such pictures as Home of the Brave, My Foolish Heart, and Bedlam. All of them created by the man who directed me in Champion, Mark Robeson. Thank you, sir. Now, let's see your face. Ah, oh, here. Huh? The bruises seem to have healed. Hmm? You're ready for another fight picture. Oh, no, Mark. Not again. Uh, Kirk, what if you do get beaten up just a little? Look, it's not the first time I get beaten up that worries me. Say, you know what really hurts? What? When I fall out of the ring and you step out from behind the camera and say, uh, Kirk, you got too much blood on your opponent's glove. Let's, Let's shoot, shoot it, it again, again. yeah. <laughs> Kirk, I apologize. I was a beast. Well, my wounds were soothed by the fact that I had Mark Robeson for my director. And believe me, that's worth a lot of punishment. Thanks, Kirk. And I promise next time I do a picture, I won't ask you to do any scenes over again. Oh, I'm glad you understand, Mark. Too bad. I was thinking of doing a picture with a lot of love scenes. Uh, love scenes? Oh, well, good night, Kirk. Uh, now, wait a minute, Mark. Uh, oh, good night, everybody. Now, wait a minute, Mark. to you, Kirk Douglas and Mark Robeson. Remember next Friday, Alan Ladd in Chicago Deadline with screen director Lewis Allen, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Champion was presented through the courtesy of Screenplays Incorporated and producer Stanley Kramer, soon releasing The Men. Kirk Douglas can currently be seen in the Warner Brothers production, Young Man with a Horn. Mark Robeson's latest picture is the Samuel Goldwyn production, Edge of Doom. Frank Lovejoy may be heard in his own radio show, Nightbeat, every Monday night over many of these same NBC stations. Included in tonight's cast were Rita Lynn as Grace, Jack Edwards, Dan Riss, and Frank Barton. Champion, from a short story by Ring Lardner, was adapted for radio by Milton Geiger, and original music was composed and conducted by William Lava. Portions of tonight's program were transcribed. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley, with dramatic direction by Bill Karn. You are invited to listen again next Friday when RCA Victor presents... Screen Director's Playhouse, star Alan Ladd, production Chicago Deadline, director Louis Allen... <laughs> Next, here's Jimmy the Great Rupert Durante on NBC.